Alright, so this is going to be the last hand here of this video, and it's going to be dealing with another very thin multi-way value spot. So Robert Y here is going to open this one up for a raise from under the gun plus one with two red tens to 15. He's going to get a call in multiple spots, king nine of clubs. Jake's going to call here, who's actually going to have um, the most important hand, UTG three. Viet's going to call on the small blind with a kind of a short stack with queen jack. Igor's going to call with 7-3 of hearts. And this is commonly what you will see at these types of stakes of 1-3, live, no limit. People calling where they're not deep enough. Things like that. So the board comes out queen jack 5. Robert, again, the preflop raiser. And Viet checks out of the small blind, which is pretty common. And it gets checked around. So Viet out of the small blind checks. Big blind checks, preflop raiser checks this board, which I think is probably a pretty good play when he gets four callers. Um, hot dog checks with uh, king nine with a gut shot and backdoor clubs, and Jake checks with what is king five. Now the turn comes, the king of hearts, which is a pretty big card when you look at it, because Viet had flopped top two pair, and now Jake... Uh, has kings and fives, Robert with the bottom end of a straight draw, hot dog now with top pair. So now, into a $75 pot, Viet bets. And he bets kind of small. Uh, about, we'll see it here in a second, he bets 12, which is sort of strange. You know, when you flop top two, and it gets checked around, and the turn brings a backdoor heart draw, you would think that you would want to lead out for larger, but here he bets 12. And this is what we're looking at here from Jake's perspective. You know, we check back king five, we call it king five suited. Now a guy in the small blind leads out here for 12. The preflop raiser calls, hot dog calls plus two. So we got the preflop raiser, the guy to his immediate left also calls. The guy in the big blind called, he led small, Big blind calls, preflop raiser calls, this guy calls, and now we're sitting there with king five. And to be honest with you, because of that bet sizing on the turn, we pretty much know that the guy in the big blind, the guy who's the preflop raiser, and the guy to his left most likely does not have a better hand than we do with king five. The only one that we really have to worry about is that initial better on the turn, but his sizing is so small. I mean, the only hands that people would think would be the basically invulnerable nuts would be like ace ten of hearts, something like that, which might be from the preflop raiser, you know, maybe from the guy to his left, but I just w I don't expect, I mean, this looks to be like a hand, like a king from the small blind. And then once all these guys call, it's all single paired hands. And the board is so draw heavy that I'm certainly going to raise. So when this guy bets 12, this guy calls 12, preflop raiser calls 12, this guy calls 12. I'm probably going to bump it up to at least 85, if not 100. Jake decides to raise it up pretty small. He makes it 60. Um, the small blind calls, Viet, which you can see he flopped top two. It's very surprising that he actually just doesn't move in here with this stack. That's going to bring in Igor, who's got a small flush draw. Robert Y finally folds. And um, we are going to see it basically three ways. The river is a deuce. And now it's going to get checked to Jake. So he raises the turn. He gets two guys out. River's a deuce and it gets checked over. Again, what are you scared of here? I just don't feel like this guy with this stack, if he was betting with a better kings up in the form of king jack or king queen, would only lead for 12. This all comes back to hand reading. Would he really only lead for 12 and then just call a $60 raise after all the guys had called in between? Probably not. I mean, I understand that all the draws bricked out. 
and it's tough to get value, but you have to put a bet in to get called by a single pair of kings or some sort of weird lower two pair, like Viet has in the form of Queen Jack, or some sort of weird hand like Jack Deuce of Hearts, Queen Deuce of Hearts, something like that. I mean, this is a situation where on the turn against kind of a more reasonable turn range of your opponents, this turn raise could be called like a combo draw. Well, it's not even a combo draw. It's more of a, just a just a raise on the turn to get called by draws and then a check back on the river. But because of the unorthodox sizing, um, once you get called, especially on the short stack here, you have to have the best hand. And I'm going for a single, you know, I'm going for a value from King X here. The pot's 279. I'm going to bet like maybe 100, 125, something like that. It's a 1 3 game. It's all about maximizing your value. So even though I like this turn raise, if you do the hand reading, you have to bet the river small. You absolutely have to bet the river small. I think it is a mistake to check it back, and that's exactly what Jake did. He would have gotten called, obviously, by Viet. I'm still surprised that Viet just didn't shove turn after he bet um, on the turn. But you've got to look at the situation, look at the bet sizing, and, you know, do a proper hand range in your head. With that, that's going to wrap it up for us um, this week. I loved this video. I mean, even though it was 1-3, I think it brought up so many basic and advanced concepts it's probably one of the best videos i've done in a long time so if you're not subscribers head over to crushlightpoker.com and if you want to check out uh, a month for free you can use the code bha10 uh, in the coupon code box and we do these videos every single friday and we specifically talk about live no limit cash games so I'm signing off. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.